What's up guys? So, uh, after the last video I posted about the stole drags coming to Reno, there's a few comments about my leading edges, and I didn't think you guys would catch that at all. So you guys are good, you got good eyes, but let's talk about these leading edge cuffs, why I put them on, and what I think of them. I'm Trent Palmer, I fly drones for a living and bush planes for fun. Follow along as I journey off the beaten path of aviation. Okay, so I gotta give you guys a story. My buddy Ken and I built these leading edges, uh, man, it's, it's been months ago now, uh, based on a design that was done for Kit Fox for us to experiment with uh, changing the airfoil, the lift profile, and hopefully getting a little bit better stall speeds uh, without hurting our crews. Also, the idea was, since I'm in a nose-heavy scenario, Adding a little extra wing to the front of the wing is gonna move the center of lift forward, which is effectively like moving my CG back, which helps with my center of gravity, my whole weight and balance would be better. That was the idea, and that was what we got into. Anyway, let's flash back to Ken and I building these things on his hot wire foam cutter. So as you can see there, we went ahead and cut these out of a pretty high density, pretty tough styrofoam for now. Something that we could just adhere to the wing to try just as a test phase. This is not a permanent solution at all. The idea being, if I like it, if I can feel enough of a difference, we'll use everything to create a mold and uh, build a, a composite carbon fiber leading edge that uh, we will then wrap over with fabric and do the whole nine, and that would be a permanent solution. There were a few issues though with the way that we did it. Part of it being the way that we adhered it and taped it on ends up leaving a little bit of a, a lip. I'll show you that in a second, uh, right before my VGs. So I'm thinking with that lip right there, just because it didn't roll off quite as smoothly, because again, we didn't cover it with any hard material for now, it's just got the vinyl wrap over it. Um, it's not perfectly smooth, which is gonna actually, I think, pretty significantly affect the, the performance of the leading edge cuff. The other thing, it also seems to be blanketing out my VGs that are on the wing, and also with moving my leading edge that far forward, my VGs are now way too far back, probably ineffective anyway. So there are some variables here. Now the problem is the timing for me putting this on was not ideal. And the reason I felt rushed to get the, the leading edge cuff on was the Reno Air Race has made it sound like we had to come out with the plane how we planned on flying it so there were no major modifications between the time that we did our training and the actual air races. So I raced to get those things put on before our pylon race school or the, the rookie training school, just so I could have them out here and have the same plane come September, should I wanna use the, the leading edge cuff. Either way, if I take the leading edge cuff off, uh, it's no longer a major, major modification either because the plane's flown without it for hundreds of hours. But the other thing too, I had just put on that prop right before putting this on, so I was still getting a feel for the plane. It just turned into the warmer summer months, which I'm not used to. I've not flown with this engine set up in the warmer weather, so there's just too many variables. So my plan today is to do a test flight with the leading edge cuff on, and then as quickly as I can, remove the leading edge cuff so I can go and get a flight in after it to directly compare the changes between having the leading edge cuff and not having it. One thing, it's like 8.30 in the morning, density altitude's already at 7,000 feet and climbing fast, so it won't be a perfectly fair comparison, but I'm hoping going back to back, flying with the leading edge cuff and without, I'll be able to get a pretty good gut feeling of if there's an improvement and if so, how much, and is it worth all the energy and weight and time to uh, build a, a composite leading edge to put on there, so. Oh man, now this, Osmo thing, which has never done this before, is just keying my 
opening the squelch on my radio all the time. Wow, that sucks. It's the traffic, Freedom Fox taking runway 26. Uh, we'll be uh, circling overhead instead. Okay, so uh, it definitely takes off nice right now with how I have the, those weights on the tail and this leading edge cuff. It flies really nice especially on takeoff. One thing I will say though, because of the, the droop to the leading edge, it changes the angle of attack of the overall plane, at least compared to how the pitot tube is. Uh, so my angle of attack indicator, even at high speeds, is showing that I'm a high angle of attack, but I'm not. It's just the different uh, uh, profile of the wing. Okay, and since I'm trying to get this done pretty quick before the, the heat and wind sets in too much, I think I'm just gonna go ahead do a couple stalls up here, kind of feel the thing out, and then go rip it off and do some stalls. Because really my, my primary concern is my stall speed. It doesn't seem to have too much impact on my cruise speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, take that as, as unimportant for now because cruise in the big scheme of what I care about is not that important. So uh, let's get it up to a couple thousand feet above the, the runway here and see uh, what I'm getting for stall speeds. Indicated, of course. Okay, we are at 7,000 feet right now. I'm gonna start slowing her up and uh, see how she does. At stall, again, this is with the leading edge cuff. I'm gonna leave the same amount of baggage and everything uh, both times. And I'll just do this due uh, north, we'll call it that. Okay, I've got myself set at neutral thrust, being that this prop will go so flat that it actually creates drag. Um, at 38, let's get it a little bit back on that power, 37, 36, 30, it almost shows 35 in brakes. And that's at 16.9, 17 inches of manifold pressure. One thing that's really impressive with this prop, when it's fully pulled out, it's just like putting the brakes on. I am aiming like what feels like straight down and the thing just sits at the same speed right at like 70 miles an hour, doesn't want to go any faster. It's good for getting into places short or at least steep. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, I already started, peel off all the, the vinyl that's wrapped over this, get these things disconnected and uh, then we can go test it again. That way, again, I'll know back to back uh, how it compares and then uh, make up my mind on if I wanna go way out of my way to build a composite one and, and continue the modification. All right, that was easy. About 10 minutes later, got this thing back to the regular leading edge. Man, those things are a lot easier to take off than they were to put on. But let's go see, now I can have a direct side-by-side -side comparison. Again, sorry about that Osmo making all that noise, but I only have two cameras today, so I'm gonna run it. But let's go see how it does. Uh, start traffic, Freedom Fox, taking runway eight at Alpha 2. Be the party, not fun. I'm gonna go right to 17 inches of manifold pressure. This was my uh, neutral zero thrust arrangement. I'm full aft trim. Let's see how this thing goes. 45, 44, 43, 42, 41, 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, and then it broke. Again, that was neutral thrust. I'm gonna bring it back out to full idle, which adds a whole bunch of drag. I probably won't be able to get it as slow. Let's see what it does. Right, there's full power idle. Right at 30, it's just 40, 45. I can't get that tail down. And I'll give it a little bit more power this time. Let's just see how slow I can get it. Pushing up the shove, kind of hanging on the prop. Oh, this is right at that. Oh, there's 31. Yeah. Yeah, it. <laughs> so, the uh, conclusion right there, which is pretty bad, based on the numbers I just saw back to back, there was zero gain, if anything. Woo! All right. Well, that sucked. Yeah, I don't know. The results obviously were not what I was hoping for, and. Uh, 
pretty disappointing. It was one of those, it was a, a decent bit of, of time and energy put into it and uh, kind of for nothing. But you know, in all fairness, the STI wing was designed to have superior uh, low speed handling characteristics and really low stall speeds with a low drag design. So it's been pretty hard to beat the standard airfoil as far as just having uh, you know, a lot of lift and slow stall speed while still cruising pretty fast for the amount of horsepower I have and for the size wing in relation to how heavy my plane is at this point, it still performs pretty damn well. This was one of those things though that makes experimental aviation so much fun. The fact that we can tinker and tweak and tune and a lot of times it's for just minute gains. So if I had seen across the board a couple mile an hour increase or decrease, I should say, in stall speed without really hurting my cruise, um, I would have for sure moved forward with making these leading edge cuffs. Given that I really didn't see anything at all, um, and it, it seemed to act weird. I, it, it took off really nice with the, the leading edge cuff, but landing, it was, sometimes it was floating, sometimes it was just giving up and dropping out on me, and it was not nearly as predictable as this wing. Obviously, I've got, I don't know, somewhere around 650 hours on this wing. so. Uh, that helps knowing this airfoil so well. The other one, I mean, it's a complete different airfoil at that point. And again, in all fairness, it wasn't the best execution of the leading edge cuff. There could have been a, a much cleaner way of attaching it and, and getting rid of that, the little divot I had on the top that was probably dis disrupting airflow. And I know the top of the wing is where it counts. So I might not have given it the best uh, fair chance overall, but the amount of energy that would go into trying to redo that out of carbon and, and add all of that, including the weight, just doesn't make sense. I love how this wing flies, so. Again, it's always fun doing these kind of uh, experiments, these tweaks, that's what's so cool about the stole environment right now. Everyone's trying all these new things and sometimes they don't work. Luckily, all the other ones, you know, the 915 was an absolute game changer, insane, best upgrade I've ever done. Uh, MT prop, that thing was incredible too. Everything else I've done for this thing so far has been a hit, so to have one miss, you know, I'm not gonna complain. And then, uh, yeah, I'm back to building the house. Things are moving along crazy fast there. I need to get out there and, and film an update. I just haven't brought the camera out there yet, so maybe I'll do that today. But anyway, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. You guys know the drill. Like this video if you do. Subscribe if you haven't. Come be my wingman. See you guys in the next one. Peace.